Greetings viewers and welcome to today's video snippet. We will be covering the setup within the Sage 200 retail point of sale module. Now obviously in a retail environment you're going to have a main server with Evolution installed which is going to act as your back office platform and then you'd normally have for example terminals You'd have hardware such as poll displays, cash drawers, cash tools, etc., where the actual transactions are taking place. Now, it's important to understand that there are a couple of setups that must be completed within the retail setup before you can begin trading at your retail point of sale terminals. Right, let's get started. Now, normally with a retail environment, you're going to have a till. A till could be a physical cash register. Or actual fact, it's a terminal, a computer terminal where the actual transactions are taking place. So for every workstation or till, you need to create a physical till with an evolution. That gets done under your retail point of sale <coughs> maintenance tills. And we'll go add a till there. We're just going to give it a name. And remember is that within the retail point of sale, multi warehousing is a compulsory module. So therefore I need to now go and link a warehouse to my tool. This simply also enables me to ensure that goods are only sold from a specific warehouse during the transaction process. Now, we also have the ability to have automatic numbering. So we can have automatic numbering by tool. So when you have processed a retail point of sale transaction, simply by checking at the prefix of the document, it's very easy to see exactly at which till the transaction took place. So as you can see, based on my till code, the prefixes of all the transactions processed will then display my till code. It will simply mean is that I can identify at which till a transaction took place. If we go back to till, you'll see we've got something called a retail pause layout, which we'll come to shortly. Now, in a retail point of sale environment, there really are two platforms with regards to user permissions. Normally, an administration, agent administration agents, will set up our agents, and within the access permissions, you'll see that we do have a section there that relates to retail point of sale. So under maintenance, for example, you can specify that certain transactions or options are available and can be carried out per agent, as well as certain transactions, for example, the cashing up, finalizing, creating trading sessions, etc. So these are the basic foundations of your access permissions for the users. However, within retail point of sale, we have another platform, another level, which is really the till security. So if I go to my retail point of sale maintenance, we have an option there for till security. Now remember is that this is a setting which relates to the till transactions. So I can simply go through the relevant options over here and either allow, disallow, or only allow a certain function to be carried out by the supervisor within the retail environment. So for example, if I were to say cancel a lay-by, I can simply say, for example, which option is available. Allow the supervisor to perform the function, allow the till operator, or disallow the function completely for that particular terminal. So I'm just going to, I can also just, for example, update them all. And say, for example, allow all of those options within the environment. And there we go. So as you can see, another level of toll security, which is specifically for the transactions processed at the terminals. We then come to our retail point of sale menu setup. Now, 
This really allows us to customize a till layout or till screen for a particular till for a specific user. On the top half of the screen, you see we've got a couple of the function keys which are used within our retail product environment. Within those function keys, certain areas or certain options. So what I can simply do is I can allow certain features to appear just by using a drag and drop option. So when the user logs in, which we'll do just now, you're then going to, before that, simply go and link a pause cell menu to a specific user and a specific tool. And there we go. So I'm just going to allow certain options to be made available for that user on the layout simply by doing a full customization. Right. There's a further area where I can say, for example, link it to a till. And then I can fully customize the screen colors, etc. So I can say, there we go. And I can have certain button colors, font colors, etc. Right, so there I've specified my specific pause menu layout. And I can say OK to that. When the user then logs in, once I've linked them to this layout, only these particular features will display. Right, so there we go. And what I'm going to be doing now, firstly, is remember is that when I go to my tools, at that point, I have the ability to link the tool to a specific layout. And if I revert back to my agents and edit their permissions, we have an option there for retail point of sale. And at that particular point, I can then go link them to a specific till layout if I need to. And at that point, I can also specify a till for that particular agent. Okay. Just one thing which is quite important is that Within this option, I can then specify what is the maximum line discount percentage that I can allow, this agent can process, as well as the maximum overall discount percentage. So as the name says, line discount is a line discount on a transaction line, whereas maximum overall discount is overall discount percent allowed for a specific docket or transaction. And once again, I also have the ability to specify that the agent currently processing is a supervisor agent, and then obviously that agent will have the ability to perform certain supervisor functions within the environment. Right, let's just not link them to that at this point in time. And OK. Right, so that's all sorted. Security has been sorted, we've linked them to a menu, and we've allocated them the necessary access permissions within the point of sale setup. Now, remember is that you're going to have a server, which is going to be a physical machine at a certain location, and then those workstations or tools are going to be located at a different place. So to connect them, we need to the following. So just for example, think that you're going to install the workstation version of evolution at the actual tool point. And once that's done, you need to go into the install directory of your evolution. And you'll notice is that within there, there's two options that regard retail. With something called a retail tool configuration and a retail pause. A retail pause is the actual exe file, or the application file that's used to run the application at the workstation. 
And then at the workstation, there's something called a retail till config. So as the name says, we're going to now go and configure the till, and we're then going to go link the till to the actual terminal. So first it's a case specifying the SQL server name instance, together with the database you're going to be connecting to. Next up is the common database information, SQL server name and the common database name. And very importantly, on the drop down here, you can specify which till is going to be operational at that particular location. So therefore, they've got my till information there, and I'm going to specify my till and go next. Okay. Normally, in a retail point of sale environment, we do have hardware that's linked to the till, for example, a cash drawer, poll display, etc. So what I can simply do is I can go to my cash drawer or can, on the drop down there, I can specify if a cash drawer, poll display or whatever is, is uh, applicable or whatever option or whatever hardware is linked to that terminal. And then very importantly is that I've got my layouts. So what I can do is I can specify where the printout is going to be to a screen, a specific printer, et cetera, number of copies to be printed, and if I'm going to be emailing those transactions at the point of entry. So we've got that configuration set up, and there's our tool configuration set up. Now, just very importantly, is that if you go back to retail point of sale, we do have the option to set up devices. So in this particular instance, we're installing an evolution demo program, we're installing the program. It does create a few default uh, hardware devices. Uh, for example, poll display, cash drawer, a receipt printer and a serial printer. And if need be, we can go create new ones or edit the existing ones. For example, poll display, this information would then come from your hardware supplier, um, for example, the board rate, et cetera, and here would be your port type, specifically how that device is connecting into your tool terminal. As usual in retail point of sale, we need to set up our defaults, and under maintenance, we've got our retail point of sale defaults, Just information about trading sessions. So remember is that you can specify how long the session will last. For example, if your shop's open from this hour to that hour, you can obviously specify the number of hours. And if we then want to prevent any transactions taking place after the shop has closed, we can say disable trading on expiry. You can also set up, for example, a float per agent or a float per tool and specify default float amount. Just in a docket defaults, we've got a couple of options there regarding delivery and the transaction types processed uh, within the retail environment. And then docket options. Okay. For example, the force option with regards to sales reps on dockets per lines, force serial number selections, etc. And are there any sort of prompts that not need to be completed once the transaction is taking place? And then a couple of options related to lay bars, if you are going to be using them, number of payments, when is the payment due, etc. If you are asking for a deposit, what the minimum amount is or minimum percentage with regards to lay bars. And things like, for example, cash pickups. Cash pickups are very useful, especially in a cash environment where you don't want to have too much cash in the till you can then add an alert whereby the system will warn you that a certain amount of cash has been reached within the till and a cash pickup can then take place in order to reduce the amount of cash that you have within your till. With regards to cash, cash ups, obviously very important one the cash once a, a session has or a shift has been completed, the relevant uh, transaction types that are going to be updated 
once the cash up has been reconciled with the actual day's takings. And then quite a unique feature we have in Sage Evolution, which is called Keeper Size in point of sale. Keeper Size, as the name implies, means the customer has identified an item they wish to purchase. However, they would like us to then keep it aside, take it off the shelf and store it for them so that they can come and make the payment at a later stage and then go and collect the goods. So what we can have is we can say that we will keep the item aside for the customer for a certain number of days. And if off those days the item is not being collected, the thing gets put back on the shelf and will be available for selling to other customers. Right, so that's our setup. And now we simply need to go to our fixed as our retail point of sale, transactions, and start trading. So this particular time, the retail store is opened and I can now start trading. So it's simply a case of selecting start trading. Gives me details, I can insert my description there. And very importantly, I can specify the session duration date, which comes from our default, it's an eight hour shift. As I mentioned, is that you are able to prevent any further transactions taking place once the shift has been completed. Right, so we're up and running. There's our shift information. And all that will happen now is that at the terminal itself, the retail terminal where the till is situated, the agent will log in. They'll probably have something like a desktop icon or a shortcut, go into retail point of sale. Run the EXE application. Tells us what the tool name is, where they're working from, who the agent is, their password. Log in as per normal. As the first time that they're opening up their shift, they need to accept the float. At this point in time, the float can be changed. Um, this is obviously from our default, which we specify the default float amount. Uh, accept the float. And the agent can now start processing transactions. So it's simply a case of going to the F2 option. And we've then got the retail tool screen available for processing. Now remember is that if we had linked that particular retail pass menu setup to the tool to the agent, this information would appear differently based on whatever layout I've linked to this particular tool or the agent. So as you can see, very important that we set up the relevant parameters beforehand before we begin trading. Things like very importantly the tool security to determine exactly which agents or can certain functions or processes be carried out at the till by a certain agent, disallowed or only available to the supervisor? Create your till and then go and run your till configuration where you physically go and specify that this till is going to be used at this terminal. Once you've done that, you can then go and open up the trading session, begin trading and the agents can continue processing transactions at the till points. Thank you once again for watching. It's over and out for me and goodbye.